true theme park philosophy takes the visitor and puts them in another time or another place in um, a, a totally illusionary environment where all the rides and attractions are faithful to that theme. open, Dragon River's open, uh, Bubbleworks is going to be a few minutes late. Adam Tussauds owned Chessington Zoo and they decided that they wanted to expand and move ahead into the 21st century and they approached me knowing that I was involved in amusement rides and also associated with them and said what can we do to the to the old fun fair at Chessington and I said well you really can't do anything much to the old fun fair at Chessington you've really got to take a much broader look at it and um, consider um, much more innovative rides and attractions and features and they said okay come up with a plan and that kind of took me aback I didn't think that they would say that and I came up with a scheme and that was more or less what was built. We wouldn't have been interested in just, uh, just developing a ride park, however exciting that might have been, because there's nothing particularly unique in a ride park. And John Wardley persuaded us that uh, heavy theming was the thing to make it unique. I must admit I was quite taken aback when they said, right, OK, we're doing it, because it involved huge capital expenditure of about £10 million. Um, and uh, I felt that an awful lot rested on my shoulders. You know, have I got it right? Am I really in touch with what the British public want? Because you have to plan so far in advance, you have to anticipate by three or four years what people are going to want. And I thought, you know, if I've got it wrong, boy, am I in trouble. And so consequently on opening day, um, my old heart was really fluttering. I just didn't know whether people were going to like it. And thank goodness they did. <laughs> in a big way. <laughs> Theming turns a fairground ride or a regular amusement park ride into a special experience. It takes the visitors for just a few minutes or in the case of a whole theme park a few hours to another time and another place. Um, and it is what escapism is all about. And that's all this is. We're not trying to pretend that, that we're now in a, in a, a, a Thai jungle. Sure, we're in the middle of the, the Surrey countryside. But at the same time, it's a bit of fun. The average family of four will spend about 50 to 60 pounds on a day at a park like Chessington. That includes obviously getting here, the petrol money, the uh, ticket to get in, which is maybe about 30 to 40 pounds for all four, plus they'll spend money on food and drink and souvenirs in the day. I want money. That's what I want. That's we don't force them through the shop, but it's certainly made quite clear that that is the ideal way through. Um, and they're given the choice to buy souvenir, souvenirs which are themed for each of the areas. After we had completed phase one at Chessington, we made a problem for ourselves. Because we had such a success on our hands that people were turning up in vast numbers and we needed to increase our capacity. And we felt that a roller coaster of some kind was the right thing. But there aren't very many things you can do with a roller coaster in the way of theming. You can turn it into a runaway train, you can put it in the dark and make out you're traveling through space. But there was one new piece of technology that had just come out in the States, and that was the suspended roller coaster, where the thing hangs from the track. And that gives the illusion of flight. So I thought, right, flight. How can we get a theme to do with flight? Well, birds, well, no. Then I thought, bats. 
vampire bats. Dracula, Transylvania, asking for it. But then I had to think of other ways to develop the Transylvanian theme as being a cute, pretty little mid-European village, all laid a hose and, and, and hanging baskets and everything. Um, I thought every German town has its brewery, its Hofbrau house. So what about a, a wacky, crazy tour of a, a brewery? Then I thought, well, no, not brewing beer. What about brewing fizzy pop? that had magical properties. And so the Bubble Works was born. Professor Burke's Bubble Works is a tour through his fizzy pop factory to see how he makes um, his magical fizzy pop. Simple as that. When we were considering the actual processes of testing the pop over there, that is the fart tester that tests the fart ability of, of the pop. Now, we actually had a board meeting to discuss whether we could use the word fart. Oh, he, he, that was a good one, Matt. <laughs> um, and, and hiccups as well. Now, the Americans couldn't possibly do that. They couldn't, they couldn't use those kind of words. Basically, I think our, the, the British sense of fun is a lot more spontaneous and a lot less precious to the American sense of fun. And um, I believe in capitalising on that. Attention to detail and authenticity is so important. In this ride, we spent quite a few thousands of pounds just perfecting the smell of oranges, or perfecting these fountains, so that you can actually go under the water as we are now and hardly get wet. We're going under quite a few thousand gallons an hour of water. Um, and hardly getting wet <laughs> um, and it's very authentic <laughs> 